What happened when modern humans and Neanderthals met? Who were they? How did they live? How did they disappear? This type of question has inspired art, books, movies. We're really privileged to be working on understanding how the process of Neanderthal disappearance worked and what happened uh, around 40 to 50,000 years ago in Western Europe when our first modern human ancestors arrived here. We've undertaken a six year study uh, in which we have systematically redated the key archaeological sites that have been excavated over the last hundred years. Radiocarbon dating is based on the idea that a tiny proportion of the carbon that we uh, find on Earth is radioactive. Every living organism, all animals, plants, etc., they all take up carbon to build themselves through photosynthesis and through the food chain. Once death occurs, however, the trace amount of radiocarbon that's been incorporated in everybody slowly begins to disappear and degrade because it's a radioisotope. Over the course of five and a half thousand years, half of the radiocarbon in the material that we date disappears. This lab in Oxford was one of the first in the world to use accelerators to measure carbon-14. And this offers us a huge number of, of advantages because we can date things that are extremely small. Before uh, AMS, accelerator mass spectrometry, came along, we'd need about half of a female to be destroyed for a, for a radiocarbon date. And the truth is often those radiocarbon dates, particularly of the older material, didn't end up being particularly accurate. So imagine um, half a teaspoonful of sugar for your tea that amount of bone powder is now what we would usually drill in order to get a radiocarbon date from bone. If, for example, we had a bone that was 50,000 years old and it was contaminated with 1% modern carbon-14, that would make the date 7,000 years too young. So contamination removal is, is fundamentally important for accuracy in radiocarbon dating. And in order to, in order to do that, we undertake a series of chemical pretreatment steps designed to isolate the collagen and then purify it. The purification of the collagen is undertaken using one of these. It's a, it's a molecular weight uh, cut-off filter. The collagen is a high enough mass that it's retained above the level of the filter. And using these um, ultra filters, we found that we can get much more reliable and accurate determinations. There's a team here of about 15 people. Um, on the paper, there were 50 authors, so a big collaborative group and we have uh, systematically dated uh, archaeological bones that come from the layers in the sites where we find the last Mousterian, which is equivalent to the final Neanderthal uh, stone tool industry in Europe. And what we can imagine is that almost like a mosaic, there are patches where Neanderthals seem to survive a little bit later and anatomically modern humans who are coming into Europe, which suggests that they weren't living one on top of the other, in Europe at least. We've known since um, 2011 that Neanderthals and modern humans interbred with one another. So we know that, at least in some parts of Eurasia, there was a close relationship, very close relationship, between these populations. In fact, everyone outside of Africa carries between 1 and 2 percent Neanderthal DNA. So in a way, our close cousins, as Neanderthals are, aren't extinct anymore. They carry on in, 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 us, uh, in us today.